All right, so today we're just going to go through uh, a bit of an introduction to the helmet element of our second assignment for Advanced CAD. Um, just to go over it again, this task builds upon the skills developed through the sunglasses project. You'll be developing a new generation helmet for wheeled or snow sports. Uh, and in order to complete the task, where it says you need a 3D scan your head, all that. As you can understand, that part of the assignment is scrapped just because we don't have access to 3D scanners at home. So we're just going to go ahead and ignore all of that. However, uh, scaling canvases to one-to-one -to -one should be a part of it. Um, you be, should be sketching a design before you model it up like always and bringing those in, scaling them up to a uh, human figure that will import as opposed to, you know, scanning our own. Um, and a real important one of this is the analysis of surface flow. Um, so on helmets, it's, it's really important that the surface flows really smoothly. Um, it really changes the visual graphic of um, the piece and even bits where it just, you know, splits the surface up, makes a huge impact on how it actually looks, feels um, as a product. Um, we'll have to be using the modify features in the sculpt workspace. That's where the majority of the design will come from. And another uh, critical element is, is the web strap. So we have to have some kind of strap um, that will be um, part of the assessment. So you have to have that in there. Um, along as some sort of dynamic features, air vents, sun visors, etc. And we're going to have a look at a few examples of that in a minute. The outcome of this is going to be um, high quality renders um, using and adjusting rendering materials along with decals, hero shots, playing around with the surfaces to get some really, really nice renders coming out. And you'll do a little learner testimonial um, talking about, you know, the challenges you had, what you found interesting, um, how you would approve a it next time. Uh, just, you know relevant learning journey stuff uh, because we want to know about everything that's happening um, in terms of your progress and anything we can do to make the course better in the future or what you would do to develop your learning further after this course it's all it's good for everyone um, so what we have is Scott Mason's made a Pinterest of some helmets he's found interesting over the time uh, there is also in Canvas um, two tutorials that have been generated. Um, these are a bit out of date just because they were originally designed as or originally made as a supplement to the course, not as a way of delivering the course completely. So I'll be redoing these for our class. Um, however, there's going to be a lot in common because this is the way we've found is probably... The best method for producing a helmet in a relatively short time uh, with a high level of quality um, and there's one on each type of helmet so there's a basic bike or skate helmet and then there's a more advanced um, road bike helmet um, so they're two of the options i don't want you to think that these are the only types of helmets you can do so when we have a look at um, helmets in google we see a lot of options now the basic skate or bike helmet um, as you can see, the design's quite limited. Um, it's a very basic surface. It's got cutouts on the top and there's, you know, the extruded foam on the inside and the strap. The strap's the most complicated part of this one. Um, and I feel that if you're really struggling to get understand fusion and work with it, maybe something like this would be suitable. But I would um, very much advise everyone to go for something that's a couple stages more advanced than this. Um, so probably moving on, we have something like this here, which is a water sports helmet. Um, it's got some extra protection around the ears, um, a couple different broken up surfaces. You know, it's a bit more advanced. Then we start to get into much more complicated forms with little lips protruding out from the edges. Um, so this is what, an urban bike helmet um, you know, but still that basic main surface, although implementing a nice, uh, contour line across the top here does have its own challenges. Um, the higher level 
of complexity on the helmet, the more you will learn, um, the tougher it's going to be. But, you know, you can get a high distinction for trying to do one of these, maybe not quite getting all the way, but trying um, to get a high distinction for something this basic. It's got to be perfectly executed. So I would recommend um, for your own sake, for interest, um, going for something more complicated. Um, so like this has all the splits in it, sharp contours, um, the way these surfaces dip in and out and still provide the highlights, like something like this is really cool and complicated. Um, the addition of the fin uh, or the visor up on the front, whatever you call it, um, you know, not the simplest thing to model up, but it adds a lot to the design. Then you can come across to like a motorbike helmet. Now, um, there's no current tutorial on how to go about doing the rest of this. Um, so maybe I'll put something together for a basic motorbike helmet that you can then go off and do, um, you know, figuring out how to split the rest up. But something like this, um, what else have we got? Yeah, or something like this. It looks almost like the exact same helmet. Um, you can get some really cool stuff. Uh, if anyone was to produce something to this level, I would be absolutely blown away. Um, so I'm not setting an expectation that we're making helmets to this level of detail. There is a tremendous amount of hours that would go into modeling something like this up effectively. But again, just to reiterate, something like this, a bike helmet extruded foam with, you know, um, the plastic shell is typically the level we would expect. So something at this level, um, and then looking at some of, uh, you know, you can even go for something like a fireman's helmet. I'm not too fast. I know the criteria says sport helmet, but I think something like this could be quite cool. Um, going over to Scott's uh, pre-created Pinterest board, we can see some more interesting designs. So something like this. Um, it's really cool that it has a little lip here and the implemented visor, um, the breaking up of the surface. So again, you're going to be designing your own helmet. You're not going to be modeling up something that's pre-existing um, just because obviously we want to design as much as we can. We don't want to just copy and model things up. Uh, things like this where we've got the... Let's see if that works out. Not really. But where we've got, you know, the big sweeping surface that's split up. are really interesting. Um, so, you know, probably not a Stormtrooper helmet. But, um, you know, you could do a Stormtrooper inspired sports bike helmet or something like that um, and it's really interesting you should go through google pinterest whatever it may be and look at the design language you see on some of these so lots of them have these disrupted surfaces so it's all kind of modeled up as one surface and then it's split up into sections to give it that shape much like um, motorbike panel design is in some elements um, and then yeah like the way these cutouts work for air vents, how the visors are implemented, are they just little scoops on the front or are they dynamic pieces which fold down? Um, that's going to complicate your modelling, but obviously in a very good way. And then looking at how decals and vinyls are applied. So obviously on like something like a motorbike helmet, you have the brand up on the front, some text on the side or something like that. Um, on a sports, standard sports helmet, you might find a big logo. Um, looking at Scott's design, uh, there's, you know, um, his logo or branding. So we should implement our branding and logo that we made for our last assignment. And then we can go about adding in patterns as well. So this is just a decal that's been stuck on there. Um, you know, maybe you don't want to put it so big like that. Maybe you want to spend a bit more time, you know, you can detail the buckle and strap and apply it to that. Um, I'm really not too fast. I want to see you exploring all the different options. So when you're sketching up your helmet, like from a side view or a top view, think about where on this could you put a logo. Um, if it's a type of sleek, clean design, maybe you want to focus it on like the underside of the buckle and design a custom buckle for it. Um, if it's something loud, like a competitive sports helmet, you then obviously want to throw on a big sticker or logo on it somewhere. 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's really up to you. Um, you're more than welcome to send me through screenshots and even little screen recordings of where you're at. So um, there's another thing here. When we get to... Uh, when we get to... Where was it? Sports Helmet Files. We can download this man bust um, CAD model. Now, uh, Scott used this for his tutorials. And it says, please do not use this model to sculpt your helmet around. We'll discuss in class where to locate a clean human head model if you are not scanning your own head. So, this one's okay. I'll open up Fusion now. Um, this is what comes up. It's this guy. The problem is he's got uh, a bunch of hair. <laughs> like, you know, I don't have anything against anyone with hair. But um, it does make it tricky how to model... Um, a helmet over this head. So what you can do is come across to grab CAD. Um, I found this model and yeah it does get kind of weird and creepy when you just start googling and um, looking up in grab CAD for human head. Um, it gets a bit weird but that's okay. What's important is you grab one and the one I found works would probably work pretty fine. Um, get something that does look like a normal human and that isn't too creepy. Um, and what's important is getting the scale kind of right. So I went through and got this one, um, scaled head. It's got a heap of downloads. People really seem to like it. So you can always go through the comments just to see if someone likes something and that it worked for them. Um, but yeah, coming across to Fusion, um, we're going to see why we want to use something that's been pre-designed for modeling over. So, uh, where is it? When we bring it into Fusion, um, the problem is it's not orientated correctly. So, what we want to do is check a few things. We want to show our origin. And right now, our origin's is all the way down here um, and to the side. But the good thing is, this is actually centered pretty much dead in the middle. Which is great, because that means we can just mirror our design in some parts, and it'll work and render up perfectly with the head, if we do renders with the head. Um, like, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but, you know, 99% accurate is fine, so we just make our line there, just to double check that some of these gaps look about the same. Like, okay, maybe it's a mill or two over there. Um, maybe we can shift the model ever so slightly across. Um, but it wouldn't be a huge deal. So things like that might get some clipping when you mirror from one side of the head to the other um, on the strap, but then when you render it without a head in the way, uh, because generally you wouldn't do a product rendering of a motorbike with a weird head, uh, a motorbike helmet with a weird head, um, you will never notice it, it'll look great and it'll still be symmetrical. So um, first thing we generally want to do with this is make sure it's orientated in the right way. A lot of the times going from one CAD program to the other, you'll find that, um, yeah, something like the head will, I mean, it's not the head, the orientation, sorry, of the CAD model, if you model it in a Rhino and bring it over to Fusion, um, the X and Ys don't match up. So we got to fix that. So right now, um, obviously it's facing up in the wrong direction so it's easy just to grab it rotate and then just rotate it slightly and punch in 90 so it changes that to 90 degrees yep that looks good uh, let's just move it again and translate that way it stays in the X and Y axis um, it doesn't really matter if it's ahead or behind of the origin I just like to keep everything relatively close to the origin. That way, when you go and recenter the camera and everything on the thing, it's right in the middle. It's where you want it. So that seems quite good. I'm just going to go ahead and save that. And now it's updated. It looks great. So if we come across to our man bust here, what I've actually got is the same head overlaid. Um, and we can see why we wouldn't want to use this man. Um, so there's elements of it where he's twisted slightly, his head and chin aren't straight. Uh, don't worry about that. So if we drag up, we can see the sideline of that is going right over the origin. Um, 
His head's tilted at an angle, so his nose isn't perfectly in line with his chin. The hair's in the way, so that gives us a lot of um, too much discrepancy between each side in terms of mirroring. Um, you know, we've got the hair it looks thicker on this side as opposed to that. So that's why we wouldn't want to model something like um, a helmet over this figure. It is good though, because if we assume this is at a good scale and we know the scaled head is a good scale, the fact that they match up relatively close um, is great because then we know that, you know what, they're probably about the right size. We can then go in and use a section analysis just to double check. So again, like the game controller, a lot of this is just about understanding what we're working with first. And by doing this section analysis, we can see that, you know, it's almost at the point of where this guy's head would be without the hair. Um, obviously the back and forth distance doesn't matter because I just threw that in. Um, but it looks like this um, human head figure would work quite well. Um, you know, this has a stronger or wider jaw than the, this male. Doesn't really matter. We're not going to be around the jaw too much for most cases. So, for me, I would say this scaled head that you can get from GrabCAD is perfectly fine. Um, just reposition it and save it out. Um, I'll provide a link uh, when I upload this video just so we can all use that. If you really want to use something else, you can. If you have access to a 3D scan of your own head, you're more than welcome to use that. Um, so yeah, what I'll do is just close that down, don't save, and this is where I would start modeling. I would just rename the file to, uh, my helmet or whatever it is, um, and go from there. Um, so yeah, this is just a brief introduction of what we want to look at. Um, consider all the different types of helmets you could model up if there's something that really interests you. If you like to go snowboarding and are going to miss out on it this year, maybe model up a helmet for snowboarding. Maybe it'll make you feel better. Um, but yeah, so doing things relative to your interests is always great, um, especially the designer. We want to build up skills to things that are relevant to us. If you have never worn a helmet and don't ever want to wear a helmet, maybe look at a helmet that could be good for someone like a firefighter or, you know, um, try and find something that has a little bit of interest to you or if the specific design language of, you know, a road bike helmet speaks to you, then go for that. If you want to try and execute one of these absolutely perfectly, um, you can do that and maybe some really cool graphics on the face would help sort of show that you've got a really high level of understanding of the modeling procedures. Um, but that's where we'll leave it for now. Again, just a basic introduction and how to get started. Uh, I'll be providing some tutorials on how we go about modeling up a helmet around that head and where to start, how we're going to progress and start to add complexity. Thanks for watching.